the first thing I do is uh, uh, throw the pot, and I pick a different different size or amount of clay, and uh, I throw the pot, and I don't really have an idea of what's going to happen. I kind of let the moment decide what I'm going to do, and the clay tells me what I can do and what I can't do. And after throwing the pot, um, I have to uh, uh, let it get leather hard, trim it, and I fire it, and it's called a bisque fire. After the bisque fire, I wash the clay off, and I let it, I let it dry, and I choose the glaze or glazes that I want to glaze. And on the single color glazes, I put three coats of glaze on the outside, three on the inside, and then I fire it. On the multicolored pieces, uh, what I do is I put three coats of glaze on the outside, three on the inside as a base color, and then I take and I drip and I splash the other colors on it. This is more pronounced, the green and the red, as with the blue. The blue and the red um, is, is a little different, and this is a solid color as well. After I've done that, um, I fire it a second time, and after the second time of firing, the pot looks like it does. And then after having the pot thrown and glazed and fired, I take the different kind of, of woods that I have, and I have, um, I have black walnut. This is black walnut, and then this is a blank of the black walnut that I use. And I actually cut my own wood, and I have it milled, and I cut the blanks out on a bandsaw. Um, different thicknesses between two and uh, three and a half, four inches. And then I decide um, what kind of lid that I want. And I take and put it on a lathe and I turn the lid. And there are actually no marks. There are no lathe marks on the outside or inside of my lids, which is very unusual because when you work with a lathe, you have to attach the wood somehow. And based on my trial and error and experience, I found a way to do this without leaving any marks. So. Um, a lot of your wood turners um, are amazed at, you know, no lathe marks on it, and that's a, that's a, um, that's a trade secret, and I don't let that out. Now, and uh, um, I try to match the shape of the lid with the shape of the pot, and as you can see with this particular pot, uh, the lid conforms to the shape of the pot, and I like things with knots. I call it character, and if you lift the lid up, you can actually see the knot, and I don't do anything with that. I, I, let that, I let that the way it is, and I actually don't use any, uh, anything to alter the color of the wood. I use a, a, a clear finish on it. It's called velvet oil, um, and it actually finishes the wood off. The wood, when I'm turning it on a lathe and I'm finishing it off, I use at 80 grit, 120 grit, 150 grit, and then a 200 and 400 grit sandpaper on it. So this is all done with sanding and finishing. There are no artificial um, surfaces on here or textures. And then I finish it off with, uh, with a velvet oil that, that seals the wood so that if something happens and you drop it or chip it, you can take sandpaper, finish it off, remove the ding, put the velvet oil on, and it looks just like brand new. Uh, this is a, this middle piece is a white cedar, and then this is a blank of the white cedar that I have. And uh, this is all done, you know, right from the beginning to the end. And this particular piece is, uh, is box elder. And box elder is one of the most terrible woods we have in Wisconsin. It's an unwanted wood. And this particular piece of wood was on a tree that fell down and, and it actually bent our clothesline. And I was upset with the whole process, so I actually cut the tree apart, had it milled, and I'm using it for my, for my lids on my pots. And it has some interesting red running through it, which is like no other wood that we've ever seen. So it's actually very dynamic and very useful. And then this is black, black walnut as well. And if you take a look, the shape of the the shape of the lid conforms with the shape of the pot, and this is by design. Um, at my age, I get bored very easily, so all of my pots are different shapes, different colors, different designs, and that's by design. Um, my wife and I spent a lot of time looking at pottery when we were younger, and I was always interested and amazed by potters, and I wanted to make myself different than other potters, so I, I incorporated the wooden lids with the ceramic pots, and I believe I'm one of the only people in the country doing this. So 
it's, uh, it's very different, it's very unique, and uh, potters are usually potters and wood turners are wood turners. So I have both the wood turners and the people who like pottery. And the pottery is very functional because um, it's, a high fire, it's a high fire pottery and I don't use lead in my glazes. So they're all food safe, oven safe, dishwasher safe and microwavable. So they're not, they're, they're very practical and very functional and very unique in a one of a kind process. Um, and as you noticed on a couple of these, uh, we have some, uh, some jewelry on there, and the jewelry is designed to take the lid and incorporate the lid and bring it into the, the, the pottery. And that was actually my wife's idea, and my wife helps me with that. We choose pieces that we think don't stand alone, like this black walnut will stand alone. Uh, the box elder will stand alone, but the two pieces that have the jewelry on, we wanted to bring the lid and incorporate that into the piece of pottery. And um, my wife and I do that together. And, it works out quite well. This is actually one of my premier pieces. Um, um, the piece of pottery is a 25 pound piece of clay. This is one bag of clay. And it took, it took a little between three and four hours just to throw this and get it centered. And then the lid is, is kind of a premier piece as well. This lid is a, a old growth red cedar. And I've got a friend that lives in, in Washington State and he was kind enough to send me a piece of old growth cedar. And when I say old growth cedar, I'm talking about something that's between 500 and 750 years old. He sent by mail a piece of old growth cedar that was three inches thick, 18 inches wide, and eight feet long by the US mail, uh, UPS. And when we got it, we took it apart, and it was such a beautiful piece of wood that we looked at it for about four weeks, we couldn't cut it up. And my wife wanted me to use it as a mantle. Well, she went to school, and a friend of mine came over, and we cut it up. <laughs> and I made, I made wooden lids out of it. And this is the largest lid that I was able to make based on, on the pottery that I had and the lathe that I had. And it actually took about, about two and a half, three hours just to, to make the wooden lid. And there are five different kinds of grains, uh, grades of sandpaper used on this. It's all natural. And we treated it with velvet oil, and it's one of the most beautiful pieces that I have. And the design that I have on the, on the pottery is my signature design. I, I developed this on my own. And it's got uh, two lines moving off on a diagonal, one straight up and down, and then a curve through the whole thing. And that's just something that I found real pleasing, and it's my signature uh, to a lot of my pottery. Uh, I don't have it on all of them, and that's my, my decision as the artist. So the pieces that talk to me and that need the lines, I put them on. The pieces that I don't feel Needed, I don't put that on. This is the, the design I was talking about, and I have two lines running um, on an angle, uh, one line running straight up and down, and I have a line that, that travels through those three lines, so it covers actually all, all the planes there are. And it's very pleasing to the eye, and it's a very soft, gentle kind of design, and I came up with that after three or four years of trying different kinds of designs. and. That's my signature and it's something I developed on my own.